Welcome back to Vaginas 101. Today we talk yeast. <sighs> okay, where do I begin? I have a very personal and invested relationship to yeast. It can kiss my ass. So what is yeast? Not to be confused with the yeast you bake with, yeast is a single cell fungus that needs warmth, moisture, and basically everything that's perfect about your vagina in order to thrive. So yeast is present in every vagina. Most women would test positive for yeast on a test. The issue here is whether or not it's causing your symptoms and if it's kept in check. Some women have yeast that doesn't bother them. Other women suffer relentlessly with yeast that causes inflammation, burning, clumpy discharge, redness, and an itch that feels like the devil himself has invaded your pussy. So what causes the dreaded yeast infection? I'll talk about the big ones because diet, allergies, and stress all affect everyone individually. Yeast is really opportunistic, meaning that it will take advantage of any way it can to proliferate in the body. You could have an aggressive yeast or a strain that is resistant to treatment, high sugar levels in the urine, so diabetic women often suffer more yeast infections, a weakened immune system, stress, low iron levels. Interestingly though, there is one thing that is often overlooked, and I can speak to this from a very personal experience, and that is something called microtrauma. Microtrauma are little abrasions or scratches that can happen from sex, thinning of the vagina from menopause or low hormones from the birth control pill, it can cause fragile tissues that are easily traumatized, and so then yeast takes advantage of this weakened tissue and gets in there. Lastly, biofilm again. This allows yeast or bacteria to form that protective coating on itself. It can grow on IUDs, contraceptive rings. It allows these bugs to become resistant to antibiotics, and it's probably a big reason why so many vaginal infections come back over and over again. So let's talk treatments what not to do. Please, for the love of God, don't do these things. I read all the time about women who try so many things to get rid of yeast, and believe me, I've been there, and I've done most of them. But these do not work and actually sometimes make things worse. Number one, tea tree oil. This can cause serious burning and allergic reactions, and I see tea tree oil suppositories all the time online. I once put tea tree oil in my bath water and on my vulva, and I'm still regretting it to this day. I cannot explain to you how badly that burned. Topically anywhere, this might be a different story. In the vagina, just no. Number two, garlic. We can just skip this one right now. This can cause serious burning if your vagina is irritated. It hasn't been proven to work. Plus, I don't really wanna go fishing a garlic clove out of my badge. Number three, vaginal steaming, yoni pearls, and any homeopathic remedy that you stick up your vagina. I like the science and the science isn't there with this crap. Yoni pearls detoxing and vaginal steaming capitalize on vaginal shame and purity culture, reinforcing the patriarchy and I hate it. Use stuff that works, period. A quarter of women will get yeast infection after a course of antibiotics. And unfortunately in most women, yeast infections will come back. Most women with yeast infections are prescribed antifungal medications like fluconazole. I've taken this many times Often I would take one pill and then three days later I would have to take another pill. Something that was also recommended to me was to take a good antihistamine for the itching and also a cortisone cream for my vulva to help with the inflammation on the outside. Usually this is enough to nix most uncomplicated yeast infections. Boric acid. I love boric acid and boric acid is important for a few reasons. The first, it can be used for women who suffer recurrent yeast infections, especially when regular prescriptions don't work and the infection comes back and also for recurrent BV. Usually in recurrent BV there is a biofilm issue and boric acid can get rid of biofilms. Probiotics, for BV, for yeast, for bladder infections. In these three areas, probiotics can definitely be investigated. I'm not saying it's been proven and a lot of the research depends on the strains that are in the probiotic. And I've seen a lot of women spend money unnecessarily, but some women swear by probiotics. I've had a really great experience with the probiotics that I've used so I say give it three to six months and see if it helps. 
Make sure you look for a probiotic that contains lactobacillus, rutery, and rhamnosus. I think that's how you pronounce those, but they're linked in the description. One thing I do want to address before I wrap up this video is the stigma surrounding vaginal infections makes me so angry. There is this huge amount of shame felt by anyone that has something wrong with their vaginas. There's this slut-shaming purity culture that exists which makes things even more difficult. I dealt with so many yeast infections and honestly, you think something's wrong with you, that your body has abandoned you, that you're completely inadequate as a woman, you can't talk to anyone about it, you don't want to tell your partner what's going on, and the thing is most women get them and it seems like chronic vaginitis is ignored because, well, it's a vagina issue and everyone gets infections. Some of us deal with more than others and I, I really hope that with more education and a willingness to share, we can start to move past feeling embarrassed about these issues and get more help in this area. Thank you so much again for checking this video out. If you like this content, let me know in the comments. If there is a topic that you want more information on, don't forget to subscribe and let me know what you're interested in. See you soon.